Um, do you want to head straight into Bunny Versus? Do you need a potty break, Bunny? Uh, I think I could do it. I, I personally don't have a hell of a lot to say. Okay, then, then cool. Then let's go into that. Bunny. Yes. Are you ready for another exciting, pulse-pounding, heart-stomping, boob-shaking installment of Bunny Versus? Are you ready? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Are you jazzed? Are you psyched? Are you primed? Are you revved up? Are you cocked and loaded? Are you ready, Bunny? Are you ready? I'm not so sure about being cocked, but I am loaded. Cool. I'm a little bit high myself. Uh, well then, without any further ado, it's time once again for Bunny Versus. And now here is your host, Bunny Williams. Take it away, Bunny. And kind of bouncing off the last conversation I, really I, I think I found my new dream job because there has got to be somebody at Marvel that's just in charge of making shit up and just putting uh, out disinformation but to keep fucking... everybody off the trail Spider-Man No Way Home is 100% percent fan service the movie i remember six months ago a year ago talking to mal about spider-man no way home and saying oh man w wouldn't it be cool if this happened or this happened or what if uh this person shows up or what if they have a scene where they're all talking and they say this i was shocked at how much of that happened there yeah. was one scene that uh mal and i talked about o over and over again and it 100% happened in this movie. And I was really? so happy to be like, oh my god, they had, they had a scene, and, and oh, yeah. It was literally just fan service the movie. But it is disingenuous that for the last year or two, they've been saying, this is not happening. This is not happening. This is not happening. This is not happening. Hey, all of you fans, fuck you. And then the movie comes out, and they go, Oops, are bad. So, yeah, yeah, but the thing is, like, like so much shit came out that wasn't happening that some just had to have happened. Yeah, you know, but like, but like that's that's the role of the disinformation officer at at Marvel, which I want to be at. I want to be able to call up a random show and say Doctor Doom and then hang up real quick. Yeah. You know? I I was upset because they're like, oh my god, Alfred Molina's Doctor Octopus is coming back. Jamie Foxx's Electro is coming back. But but in in my heart, I was like, okay, but can we have Bruce Campbell show up? Yeah. Can we have the guy who owned the pizza place show up? Can a Spider-Man deliver a fucking pizza? Yeah. I was thinking, like, what about Paul Giamatti's iconic rhino? Yes. The worst uh, Russian accent this side of Hawkeye. Uh, what about uh, the foreign guy who was renting the apartment to Peter? Can we get him? Yeah. What about uh, uh, what's his name? The the first Eddie Brock from the. Can't we get that '70s show up in this bitch? Topher Grace. I just want to hear three lines from a new Spider-Man film, and I know that it's impossible. But if they can bring Harold Ramis back from the dead, then I can watch a Spider-Man film with the line. Bone saw is ready. Yeah. None of those things happen. None of those things. And I'm pissed. I want Sally Fields Aunt May, damn it. <laughs> but uh other things did show up and happy for those, but I was hoping for a bone saw McGraw. Or uh what's his name? Uh the director of Evil Dead uh uh Sam Raimi's brother. 
working Ted? at the Daily Bugle. I was hoping for that. That didn't Ted happen. Ramey? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of like a younger, sexier Aunt May, personally. Uh, and yeah. I do like the idea that, uh, as I've seen elsewhere, of course Joe Pesci is Uncle Ben. Yeah. Yeah. How can anyone doubt? Yeah. But I also feel that, like, Spider-Man No Way Home, incredible film, wonderful film. I, 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 I'm I really hyped about this new Spider-Man movie, and I'm going to watch it a bunch more times. But also, Spider-Man No Way Home is running because Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse walked first. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you really should give credit where credit's due. If I have to pick between Spider-Man No Way Home and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, I love Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm picking the one with Spider-Ham. Yeah. Just period. Well, you know, and a black, and a black character, yeah. But, well, you have always been a Spider-Man, a spider, Spider-Ham mark. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't believe the fact that when I was little, I would go to the, the new, I went to the new comic book store by my house, and I asked them for kids' comic books, and they gave me the first issue of Spider-Ham, and I ended up buying every issue of Spider-Ham. I had a box, you know, like you used to do at comic book stores. I had a box, and they would put in yeah. my comic books. And Spider Ham was one of them, and I would I grew up talking to people about my love of Spider Ham, and even in my twenties and my thirties, people would be like, "You made that up. There is no Spider Ham. There is no Doctor Ostrich. There is no Doctor Doom." But the fact that people know Spider Ham now blows my fucking balls away. Yes. Blown away by this. You know? Mm -hmm. it's, like if, it's like if Tom Holland's next movie was a bio about the life of Lee Van Cleef. <laughs> and then suddenly everyone has Lee Van Cleef fever. And then there's a bunch of people that would be like, oh my god, people love Lee Van Cleef now? Yeah. That's weird. Okay, so there's a bunch of things that I wanted to uh, mention during right, uh, let, Bunny Versus. Let me get something out of the way first here, because okay. we are going away for kind of a family reunion. Okay. And that will be from January 2nd to January 10th. Okay. Uh... So we're gonna, I'm going to miss both shows there on the 7th and the 9th. 7th and the 9th? The second and the ninth. Thank you. Okay. January second and ninth. No podcast. Well, that's okay. You can still do the twenty sixth, which will be next week. Right. Which will be our annual watching of Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. Because we have to end every year with a discussion of Barry Mahon, Pirate World, and Nudie Cuties. Yes. Yes, we do. So that's next week, and I'm really excited about that because I will once again be writing all new notes about Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny and not at all just using the same notes that I wrote in episode 105. Because I don't even have those notes, so I don't know what... Uh, you're talking about I'll be writing all new notes so it's not yes. so next week oh man I'm going to be doing a bunch of writing and it won't be an easy one for me and a big shout out to everybody in the chat room we have a nice little crowd going on there it looks like so that's Yay. kind of nice hooray so there's a couple of so okay so no January 2nd no January 9th I'll plan something really nice for something cool for the week after that. I don't know what, but we'll figure it out. So there's a couple of things I wanted to mention from last week and this week. Number one, 
All of my kids are now fully vaccinated. Yes. Very happy about that. Uh, and and uh, we did a really good video on my uh, kid-friendly YouTube channel where I was going to talk to the to kids about trying to get them to get the vaccine. And then I realized that, like, you don't want to hear... If you're a kid, you don't want to hear an adult tell you about how important the vaccine is. So I just had... Uh, Max and Eleanor just I interviewed them and I put it all together it's a great video and I really love it and I'm really proud of you kids for getting the vaccine um, I just heard that I have them up there like, yes the first when, when you got your first shot you were kicking and scratching and punching and you yes. hit me numerous times uh, but yeah. you still did it and then the second time, you didn't punch and scratch at all. You, you, you kids were both so brave, and I'm really proud of you kids. And you kids did so good. And, yeah, yeah. And then last week in Oklahoma, it went from 35 degrees. One Like, I woke up, and it was 35 degrees out. And, I, I'm, and I'm bundling up my youngest. For winter weather because we're going well, I'm driving them to kindergarten and it's 35 degrees Guess what? and then by the time I pick them up it's 78 degrees out yeah it is insane <coughs> Oklahoma weather like yeah, that yesterday we got go oh, hold on the sound just uh, went totally off hold on no, 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 no. hold on the sound just totally went can you hear me I got gotcha. you Okay. Whew. Okay. Hey, Bunny, guess what? What? Yesterday we got to go ice skating. You went yeah, ice skating? Yeah, because Emerald will be 20 years old tomorrow. Wow. Which is insane. I, I was taking... I, I was changing their diaper when they were one year old, and now they will be 20. That's a real mindfuck. Yes. Um, for me. I was scared and crying because I was scared if I slipped but we got, they've got these little things where you like hold on tight these little then, like walkers yeah and then you skate and then someone holds on to you or you could do it by your own but I was scared but it kind of was not that hard oh my god there were two birthday parties and a church group there and it was yeah. just like I, I asked uh, Amber is it basic white bitch day at the ice skating rink? And guess but, what? Um, we got gumball. <coughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, they always want things from machines, and I'm like, I don't have money. I don't have any money. I don't have any change in my purse. And you do. Yeah, this time I made sure, like, there's going to be something at the ice skating rink the kids are going to want, so I brought a bunch of quarters. You, got, you kids got gumballs. Uh, so yeah, so it's been an exciting time. The kids are officially off of school until uh, next month. Well, on the ride home, I got nachos, and on the ride home, uh, the nachos went up, up, and straight onto my leg. How did that happen? Uh, it was like it was going, and then it. You guys hit a bump or something? Bump. It went like when we like when you go over a train track. Uh, it was like that, and my nachos uh, went up, up, and on my leg. Gotcha. Oh, my leg. Okay. Hi, and and for the first time ever, we we we've been making gingerbread houses. Yeah. And it's the first time that we as a family has done this. Have I done this because uh, no offense to anyone watching this, that always kind of seemed like a white person Christmas thing uh, that we just never did. But yeah. There's a lot cooler ones. We we saw a uh, Mario Castle gingerbread house. Uh, I'm building that right now, and it is super fun. Yeah, and then Eleanor got like a Disney Princess Enchanted Castle gingerbread house. I saw online, but we didn't buy it, a uh, dive bar gingerbread house. Yeah. And it's it, it's like a Budweiser dirt bar gingerbread house, and so we we've been making them this week, and and that's been fun. Also, I I have not been dressing up and going out as a woman that much because 
Oh, last week and this week, it just hit me like a like a realization that like, oh shit, I am now a trans woman of color, and we're just getting killed left and right. And and just at first I was really scared about going out as a woman, and then finally, what you know, it's like diving into a pool. Once you do it, you're like, oh, this is actually good, and I'm not that scared, and I felt comfortable, and I, I spent like days and days as a woman, and then eventually it just hit me that like, see, you really do have to be cautious. It is dangerous out there for a trans woman of color, and that is what I am now. And and yeah. I, I've just been. I've just been worried, but I will say, I've been in women's bathrooms with other women. I have been at stores in line with people. I have talked to people. I have been to very busy places. I've been to the mall. I've been to Walmart. I've been to the grocery store. I've been all over the place as a woman. So far, I have not had a single negative experience at all. At all. Good. No one has said anything bad. No one has has uh, said anything behind my back. No one's laughed at me. No one's attacked me. No one is. No one said shit. Yesterday, I went to. I went ice skating with the kids, and I was all dressed up, all nice. And I, as I was walking, a guy checked me out. Yeah. And that was so awesome. I walked by, and the guy did one of those like '80s sort of sex comedy things where he's like, whoa. You know, one of those, like lifting yeah. the sunglasses, sort of hey. And and it, it meant so much to me. Wow, I was ogled. <laughs> Hooray! I'm taking my first step into a much larger world. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. But you're doing it in a hive of scum, scum and villainy, so Yay. be careful. I will say, Can as a woman... Can you take up Kung Fu, maybe? I keep a box cutter with me in my purse. Just for safety's sake. I've never had to use it. I don't even use it to open up boxes. But I feel happy to know that it's in my purse. Yeah. And, and I can say now, as a woman... Why aren't there pockets in anything? Why do men get these big ass fucking pockets but only like a third of my clothes has pockets it pisses me off why because i want pockets it's just it, it, i yeah, everything needs pockets out of mother it 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 upsets me i think the 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 idea is women have purses so they don't need pockets i want pockets the idea is don't give women pockets Yeah, yeah. So, I've become one of those women that has various uh, candies and mints just rumbling through their purse. <laughs> okay, but the true sign, the true sign, do you have a snotty tissue? Oh, I've always had snotty tissues. Oh, okay. Period. Period. So there's nothing new there? No, nothing new there. Yeah, so that's been my week. That's been my week. We have Christmas coming up. I'm woefully ill-prepared. I'm not prepared for Christmas. I'm not prepared for the kids to be home, but we'll see what happens. I'm excited. I'm excited to once again watch the double feature. I don't think we did it on the podcast, but I found it online on YouTube. I don't know if it's still there anymore, so when I first saw it, I made the point of downloading it. Uh, on Christmas Eve in the 90s, Comedy Central did a double feature of the Mystery Science Theater episodes of Santa Claus Conquers the Martians and that Santa Claus vs. the Devil Mexican movie. And they yeah. showed them back to back, and somebody recorded it with commercials and posted it on YouTube. And it's my favorite Christmas thing of all time. I don't even really watch Mystery Science Theater anymore, but that is my favorite thing to watch for Christmas. Yeah. Also, I'm kind of happy that we didn't uh, we didn't watch we missed a week. That means that we won't be 
uh, discussing the 2019 Christmas movie Last Christmas. That's what we were going to do this week. Yeah. Uh, the 2019 film Last Christmas, which is a jukebox musical featuring music from the band Wham! Wow. And there's a twist ending that's really bizarre, but it's in the lyrics. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. That's the twist ending. It's really fucking weird. And I think I hate it, but I might like it. We were going to do it for the podcast, and then you canceled uh, last week's podcast. And it's like, okay, maybe it's for the best. I kind of don't want to watch that movie right now, but... Oh, man. Silent Night, Deadly Night 1 and 2. I've got a lot of backstory about the making of this. And uh, its connection to Back to the Future. Oh, okay. Yeah. Forgot about that. I haven't looked at these uh, notes for a while. Oh, and also, uh, we will also be talking about why Gene Siskel is rotting in hell. Okay. Again? Again! Again! Okay. Fuck Gene Siskel. Fuck! He pisses me off. Yeah. So that's my week. How are you, Bunny? I'm, I'm, I'm good. I had a stomach thing come out from out of fucking nowhere last week. Yeah. Until I had to can... This show is one of the bright spots of my week. I do not like to cancel it for any fucking reason. That's just how it is. But, but, oh, God, I woke up with just severe stomach cramps. And, yes, pissing out my asshole. You know, that was actually... All fluid. um, Like, this should not be happening. Pissing Out the Asshole is actually the name of Mother Teresa's autobiography. Yes. Yes, it is. <clears throat> really surprising. Because, you know, we have to keep poor people in poverty because it makes them closer to God. Yeah. You know, they, they don't really need medications to get better because they're blessed by God. Yeah, uh, back in my day, if you wanted to get closer to God, you would just fuck someone like an animal. Mm-hmm. That's a Nine Inch Nails reference. Yeah. To show you how uh, hip I am with young people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's like my grandfather used to say to me, he would say, Stevie, Despite all our rage, we are still just a rat in a cage. Yeah. 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 And in the end, it doesn't even matter. No. The love you make is equal to the love you take. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's how it goes. But why aren't we talking about Smash? That fucking show was excellent. Oh, Saturday morning, all-star hits. I fucking yes. love that so much! Fuck! I'm sorry, it's just... I I binge-watched it. I was going to watch it with Mal and with the kids, but nobody wanted to watch it. And I didn't want to, like, force them to watch it, so I watched it by myself. I woke up early one day and just started watching it. The day it came out, I, I was so excited for the show, I marked it on the on the calendar. I put Kyle Mooney on Netflix this Friday. And so I woke up, and the first thing I did was get Emerald to school, get Mal to school, get get Eleanor to school, and then get Mal to school, and then come home and just start watching Saturday Morning All-Star Hits. And, oh, and then get Maxwell's school prepared, homeschool prepared, while watching Saturday Morning All-Star Hits, and then doing school with Maxwell, while watching Saturday Morning All-Star Hits, and then getting him lunch while watching Saturday Morning All-Star Hits, and then while he ate lunch, I finished watching Saturday Morning All-Star Hits, and I'm just obsessed with that. It's so fucking funny. Maxwell is still remote? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, We wanted all of our 
kids to be remote. But Mal did great, but not in math. And you had to be perfect in everything you were doing in homeschool to continue homeschooling. Uh huh. Oh. Okay. So yeah. So Mal went back to to in person school, and then we wanted Eleanor to keep doing in person school, but they decided not to do kindergarten as virtual this year, and so Eleanor had to go back to school. But Maxwell's grades last time were perfect, and uh, so yeah, he's still doing in person. He's still doing at home school, and he's doing great. Um. No, he's still doing homeschool for the rest of the school year. Oh. Yeah, he is still going to be doing school at at home with me. Oh. It's just you know this being Oklahoma, this being a red state, this being the Midwest, they they want every kid to stop doing virtual school and to just go back into school where they can get sick and spread a virus because they're right wingers. This is a right wing state. And so the principal of virtual school, who I think is also the principal of the in-person school, the principal said, everyone has to have all of their assignments done by December, uh, by December 17th. And if they do not have all of their assignments done, then they will be forced to go back to in-person school in January. And so... We were a bit scared about that. Maxwell always gets all of his assignments on time, but we were still scared about that. But apparently the teachers who are in charge of virtual school were like, oh, so yes, you have to have all of your assignments done. Also, we'll be giving you less assignments. <laughs> just just because we got your ass. We got yeah. you. We're assigning you less assignments. So usually Maxwell has 25 assignments to do for the week for five days of school. 25 assignments, 26 assignments, 28 assignments. One week he had 29 assignments, 30 assignments. This past week, he, they assigned him nine things to do. And you can tell that it's the virtual teachers just giving them less to do to make sure that no kids are forced by the principal to have to go back to in-person school, and I like that. Yeah. That was a nice little, like, hey, thanks for having our backs, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's us. Yay. Are, are you are, are you ready to go on a break and, and do this movie? I'm no. really excited to talk uh, about Silent Night, Deadly Night. No, the all source smash. We we really have. Oh yeah, we that's what we were talking about. I, I totally forgot. I totally forgot. That's what we were talking about. I, I really it's, right off the bat, it had that same kind of uncanny valley kind of feel that that Star Trek show I found on YouTube had. You know yeah. where it's like, I really have oh. not. I don't think I have ever seen Saturday morning cartoons hosted by anybody you know I have. I have. but yeah. as soon as I saw this like it was like totally familiar I I was hoping that you liked it and wouldn't give up on it because I knew that eventually when you got to the pitch perfect parody of cartoon all stars to the rescue yes. which we covered on the podcast that you would appreciate the shit out of that. Oh, God, yes. Stop because the I... kids from saying, shut up. S up. S up. Yeah. Uh -huh. And all of the cartoon characters from the show show up. Oh, here's uh, uh, um, the dinosaur. Here is Randy, uh, Randy the, the teenage dinosaur. Here is the creator Criddles. Yes. And Paul Rudd was the voice of the guy from the Creator Criddles. Oh, was it? Yeah, the guy who who uh, 
the David Seville of the Creator Criddles. Yeah. And then I don't know who did the voice of Randy the Teenage Dinosaur, but Randy the Teenage Dinosaur's on again, off again girlfriend was Emma Stone. Really? Yeah. And then uh, one of the SNL guys, Chris Red, who's on SNL right now, he was um, one of the uh, pro bros. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it, I absolutely loved that show. And it said a lot to me just as a, as a sibling who was given shit by their parents while they heaped praise on the other child. Yeah. That is, so the show spoke a lot to me. And in the beginning of the show is when it hit me. This is just like the Sprouse twins, Cole and Dylan Sprouse, who starred in the Disney show, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. And then the follow-up show, The Sweet Life on Deck, where they were twins and they yeah. had their own TV show. And, and then I'm like, oh, and then one of the twins got a job in Riverdale. And we talked about it on the podcast. I said, I feel bad for the other brother because they're exactly the same. Yeah. But one is starring in a CW TV show. What the fuck is the other one doing? And then one of the brothers showed up in Saturday Morning All-Star Hits. And I'm like, holy shit, one of the Sprouse twins is in this. I got to IMDB this and see which one it is. It's the less popular brother who's not Jughead. <laughs> cool. Which My one heart was he? just... He was the... The Bobby there was the with guy the Bobby in the... cartoon? Uh, no, there was the guy and the girl who went missing, and that was the mystery of the whole show. Oh! He was the blonde guy who the was missing. Blonde he's, computer guy. Yeah, he's the twin brother of uh, Jughead from Riverdale. That makes sense. Yeah, so the fact that the non-Jughead Sprouse twin was in Saturday Morning All-Star Hits lends credence to Skip and Trey Bor. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what is the seven degrees of supernatural to this, honey? The Sprouse brothers, the Sprouse brothers were, on were on Zach and Cody, yeah. And their mother was the dead mom from Supernatural? Their mother was Kim Rhodes. Oh, who plays Jody in Supernatural? There you go. Everything ties to Supernatural. There's the supernatural connection to Saturday Morning All-Star Hits. Wonderful fucking show, and I'm so glad you liked it. I was worried that it was parodying something that wasn't your time and that you wouldn't like it. Oh, no, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And again, it felt familiar. The cartoons felt really familiar. You know. Yeah, the the cartoons had a shittiness that felt like late 70s, early 80s. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then the whole two twins hosting the show, that felt like 90s, like, like, a, like a CW or like a Fox Saturday morning sort of a thing. But like, it's, Yeah, it, exactly. But you can tell that Kyle Mooney knows his fucking shit. But it he knows still his worked. 80s and 90s TV shows. Yeah. And even the commercials and shit that yeah. they did. Yeah. Were the all shoes, very nostalgic feeling. The shoes where you make the hole. Yeah. I like that one. And then they were like, I when I was a kid, I loved Mad Balls. Yeah. And they were just like, like tennis balls but they had gross faces on them and I loved them and they had the same thing but they were like gross cubes yeah uh huh. and there were commercials for those and I liked those I would have liked more commercials but I was surprised at how invested I got with like the creator critters plot and yeah. 
the plot of Randy the Teenage Dinosaur. I was shocked at how at how um, upset I got with how bad they did my 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 boys the Strongimals. Yeah. And it's like, oh, the Strongimals, and then Skip in the Strongimals, and then it's Skip with a cameo by the Strongimals in the Strongimals action van. Yeah. Uh huh. They kind of got, got I, booted by their own. Yeah. Yeah. But they got booted God, off I've... their own show. Yeah. But everyone needs to see uh, Saturday Morning All Star Hits. It's on Netflix for shit's sake. It's. I love it. And, and I hope to God he makes more. Back and you're, you're watching a couple of episodes and you're like, oh, this is cool, this is funny. You know, it's a parody of Saturday morning, uh huh, it's, you know. And then, like, out of nowhere, a plot has crept up on you. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, holy Next. fuck, this show has a plot. Next thing you know, there's a plot and reoccurring characters and things start. To- tying into each other and and yeah yeah it it becomes a story it be, yeah. it goes beyond parody and becomes like a plot and there's lore and so much sub sandwiches yes uh subs we've all been saying that despite the fact that I'm the only one who watched this yeah. i got everyone saying that uh, subs? Yep. Yeah, I did show you that part. Yeah. I love that show. Everyone needs to see it. It's my next I Think You Should Leave. So, the same guy did play Skip and Trabor and the Justin Bieber kind of character. Yeah, that like uh, it 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 was like Johnny a Johnny Rush or Johnny. Yeah, Johnny Rad. Yeah. It was like a combination of like Justin Bieber, Johnny Depp, uh uh uh, uh both Corys, Hayden yeah. Feldman, and uh, Joey Lawrence, who appears in every Mace piece for it. And you just get all of those and put them in a blender, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I will say I was expecting when Kyle Mooney would play so many characters I was expecting to see that line of division between it, that sort of like a identical cousins sort of a yeah thing. And, and they they did somewhat you know uh, but then they're but, they but then they're, a, they did a good job of blending the two of them together. Yeah, there are some times... really mostly when it was just the two of them doing the show Yeah, that they really overlapped. Yeah. And one would be behind the other and things like that. Yeah, but there are some times when they're walking past each other and they're fighting each other and it's like, y'all have done a really good job of having like three Kyle Moonies on the screen at the same time and it not looking like shit. Yeah. You did pretty damn good. Yeah. And oh, yeah. then and then little Brucey is a Bobby's World parody um starring a character that Kyle Mooney used to regularly do on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really weird that a character he does on SNL made an appearance in like two or three episodes of his Netflix show. Which means there's a Kyle Mooney extended universe. (laughs) The Kyle Mooney-verse is suddenly a thing. And that's weird. Yes. So, yeah. I love that show. And I'm so glad that you loved it. I was... I'm still upset that you didn't fall head over heels in love with I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson. Yeah, and I... I, I... <sighs> Tables! Lost a bit of esteem for you on that one, but you've made it up. Tables! 
tables! <laughs> I fucking love, like, it, it, I, I take the kids to the store, and, and, and they're like, Dad, there's some steaks. Can we buy steaks and slop them up? And I'm like, no, we're not making sloppy steaks, kids. <laughs> not making sloppy steaks. Let's slop them up! Yeah. I know, I know you want to make sloppy steaks, yes. Oh, get down, get down. You're going to break this chair. It's very expensive. But yeah, so, so that's all I've got for Bunny Versus. Everyone should watch Saturday Morning All-Star Hits on Netflix. It's oh, God, wonderful. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just watching the show. I, I, the only thing I could possibly say in response to Saturday, Saturday Morning All-Star Hits is self-adhesive tape? Yes, please. Nice. I always love that. And cut on that.